Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Colony Drop, a Gundam podcast. My name is Brian. And my name is Isaac. This is your favorite Gundam podcast where we talk about everything from Gunpla to Gundam series, movies, music, lore, canon, what's what's not canon, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, concepts and ideas. Isn't that right, Brian? That is right, Isaac. And what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to discuss if Gundam could work as a musical. I mean, <laughs> if Gundam could work as a Western. <laughs> well, failed right out of the gate. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> the musical will come later. <laughs> it's on the board. So, Isaac, what is a Western to you? All right. A Western, number one, there's got to be cowboy hats. Like, <laughs> w- w- without a doubt, there's got to be cowboy hats. Fair. Number two... Yeah. It's got to be an environment that's like the Old West. So, you know, kind of sandy, deserty, dry, inhospitable. Mm-hmm. Number three, you got to have shootouts. It's not a Western without shootouts, okay? Not necessarily has to be only shootouts, but come on. We don't, we don't want to watch a cow movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit the major points. So I, what I did was I went to Wikipedia. I looked up the definition of a Western. Its stories commonly center on the life of a nomadic cowboy or a gunfighter who rides a horse and is armed with a revolver. The ambience is usually punctuated with a Western music score. Uh, Westerns often stress harshness of the wilderness set in an arid, desolate landscape. They often involve a stock plot depicting a crime and showing the pursuit of the wrongdoer ending in revenge and retribution, typically in a shootout. Sounds good to me. Sounds like a Western (laughs) to me. When you thought of like Gundam as a Western, Isaac, what Western did you think of that you like or, or grew up on, I guess? I think I wanted to take the best parts of Trigun mm-hmm. and gundam them. So I wanted a setting where it was blatantly a Western, sort of a huh. desert kind of world, just the fringes of civilization and you know small towns dotted across a, a wasteland. And then I wanted the Gundams to be essentially gunslingers in a way. For good, for bad, for themselves. They just get into hijinks and problems. That's how the plot unfolds. Besides anime, besides Trigun, are there other westerns that you are drawing inspiration from? So, for example, like I grew up on watching a lot of Bonanza. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh- Before our time, even. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah man you, there's those reruns man on like the higher channels you know above channel 13 yeah man uh old john wayne movies and then like tombstone uh was another good one yes tombstone yeah great movie more modern ones that i thought were good that i drew on for this was like 310 to yuma uh the new one true Ooh. grit the new one Django unchained and the hateful eight and then of course trigun like you mentioned so yeah i'm all for that i can't say i've seen much bonanza <laughs> I don't think Bonanza is really your speed. I think it's too family focused. No, I don't think so. I I wouldn't fit in in the Bonanza. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think you always got the damsel in distress, the saloon. Sometimes you got like you know dirty law enforcement or clean law enforcement. The group of bandits. Occasionally, the bandits run the town. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes you get the hero coming in, right? That will clean up the town, or the, the bandits mess with the wrong person, and he's got to lay down the law. So I I imagine my little alternate universe Gundam gunslingers to be much the same. How do you plan to go about fitting Gundam into this genre? You've given us some already, but like, what are your includes and how are you going to make it make sense? I'd say it's almost in a way like a post-apocalypse in a way. There's this ruined world, very dry, civilization's hanging on barely, and the way people fight and stuff is they use these things called Gundams. Maybe ammo is rare in a way, since there isn't a huge industrial base for these machines anymore. Everyone's Gundam or mobile suit pretty much just has kind of six shooters in a way. Yeah. So they're able to kind of sling those. If you're lucky, you get a beam one. If you're not, you know, you have to deal with the regular ammo ones. You know, you got your mono eyes that are usually the bandits and stuff like that. You got kind of your more visor ones that are, you know, maybe the the run of the mill sheriff mobile suits. And then you got your Gundams, which are, you know, the, the that's what the gunslingers want, you know, to pilot one of those. That's the, the cream of the crop. And you know, they got better armor, abilities, and all that, custom weapons, whatever. And they, they're the real focal point of the show, of course. I think I'm thinking along the same lines as you. In order to fit Gundam into this genre, I think we need sweeping landscapes 
that sort of facilitate like a an emptiness, right? Kind of like what you said. There's only small towns. There's not like huge bustling, you know, New York City is not like a thing, right? Yeah. And when you have that, I think then your environment has a sense of, of danger or, or harshness, I guess. Because, you know, in Westerns, right, like the cowboy leaves for a while, for a day, they need supplies. You don't know if they're going to be back, right? And then if they're gone for a while, you don't hear from them. Something could have gone very wrong, right? So that's that danger, I think, that we need. We also need some lawlessness, Isaac. I, I think we need yeah. some lawlessness, right, to have some outlaws. I think in order to get that, to get that lawlessness, that environment, I think we need technology to regress a bit, kind of like what you said in terms of post-apocalyptic. And I'm, I'm thinking that regression has to be due to a war. Right. I'm thinking Gundam X, but instead of, you know, Mad Max, we regress a little bit further to a Western status. And kind of like you, I'm thinking that like the Gundams are the cream of the crop, right? So I'm thinking those Gundams and, and maybe the other mobile suits are relics from that war. Someone in the vein of like Turn A or like Iron-Blooded Orphans. Maybe the Gundams are a step above and, you know, very durable like they are in Iron-Blooded Orphans. But maybe some are like falling apart and sort of skeletal. That would provide an atmosphere of like, we are not getting any new mobile suits outside of these relics. I'm just trying to think of like, how do you get like a working Gundam which is obviously a very advanced thing into like a Western setting, which is not very advanced. You pretty much laid it out yourself. So that must have been a war in the past, right? No, no war currently in the series. Otherwise, I'll just overshadow it. So it's going to be a much smaller story, I imagine. Instead of having a big war going on in the background, this will just be what happened after the war was over. We don't even necessarily need to determine who won. We could do cool little references, like you know, maybe a town's built in like the the ruins of a crashed uh, Musai looking ship, or um, a battlefield. You know, when we kind of pan out, it turns out it's you know in a colony that crashed on the planet, things like that. So yeah. I feel like that would really kind of set the lore. But you know, as far as the regular day to day people are concerned, they might have been talking about you know the Revolutionary War. As far as we're concerned, you know, it happened a long time ago, kind of set up the the current situation, but day to day it doesn't really impact us a ton yeah i like that i like that i also think that we need to get some of that western imagery in there so we need to come up with some excuses why that is and then we have to decide whether or not that western attire extends to the mobile suits yes <laughs> <laughs> so we need a lot of mobile suits wearing like beam cloaks or like ponchos like they do in crossbone absolutely and the hats we can i don't know it'll just look cool <laughs> So we'll say they wear hats. <laughs> yeah, I was struggling with the hat thing. Like, do we make the mobile suits wear hats? Is, is that too corny? Like, where's the line? Like, where where do you cross that line? I don't know. I think it works just because we're really doubling down on the whole Western thing. Maybe not every mm -hmm. mobile suit needs it. You know, like a, a, a run-of-the-mill bandit mono eye, they might mm -hmm. be okay without a hat. But maybe, like, they're a leader. Yeah, he's got, like, you know, some type of custom one that's got like a hat or even if he managed to get a Gundam he, he, that, that Gundam has a hat too I was trying to come up with a good reason for like people to wear the hats again besides just being outside you know you could say that maybe the war caused a big hole or something in the ozone layer and people wear hats yeah. now to keep more harmful radiation out of their eyes you know out of their from their skin but then I was like that doesn't really work for the mobile suits though so I think it really <laughs> is just a stylistic you know conceit of the show that you have to kind of accept what the hat is, Brian, it's a Minoski radiation reducer. There you go. Boom. So it, it, it's atop the mobile suit, and it broadcasts somewhat of a dome shape that's not visible to the human eye that reduces <laughs> radiation around the mobile suit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's essentially a dish, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that gives me a good idea. So my next point was, in addition to ponchos, I was trying to think of, like, what's easier to get in the story besides uh, hats? Right, so ponchos are easier. Uh, scarves would be easy. So maybe also a lot of dust was kicked up from the, the nuclear winter that basically happened. And so that would be a good excuse for the mobile suits to wear the ponchos. But then we could also use that with your hat idea because maybe the hat is some sort of, uh, like you said, like a dish or antenna that strengthens the uh, output of the communications to get through all the all the dust. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, it's just... We're clearly in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Who knows what weapons they used? We just know it dried the planet. It kind of punched a few holes in the ozone layer to the point where you definitely want a hat. And fashion extended over to the mobile suits, so you'll see them with hats built in. <laughs> or ponchos of, vary, of varying use, whether it's a beam-blocking poncho or more of a, a radiation-blocking poncho or whatever. 
Yeah, I for one welcome our our poncho overlords. <laughs> you imagine them kind of like Death Scythe? That's kind of what I see. Or, or you think more Crossbone Gundam? Ooh, or it's a straight up cape. Yeah, I was thinking straight up Crossbone Gundam. Okay. The first thing that popped into my mind when you said Gundam is a Western was two things. One was for whatever reason the the theme song from Trigun popped into my head. <laughs> and then also for some for some reason this isn't even really a Western, but I guess it has Western aspects. But in episode one of Cowboy Bebop, Spike wears the hat and the poncho. That's when I was like, hey, yeah, we need that poncho look. And then I thought of Crossbow, and I was like, oh, that was great. Like, we, we need that. The other thing I thought of, Isaac, was revolvers. You mentioned six shooters. Right. That makes me think of the unicorn's beam revolver, the beam magnum. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We need that in this show. Right, yeah. And, like, kind of taking some notes from Outlaw Star beam weaponry it's maybe they can work on it if it currently exists but there isn't so much a factory where they can just start hammering out more beam rounds and beam six shooters so it's pretty rare that you encounter beam weaponry yeah i agree ammo for this stuff has to be rare like there's no factories there's no high-tech laboratory where some dude is, is making bullets for your your beam magnum so and that's why I think that war has to be pretty good to set you back to a point where it's going to be a very long time before you're able to make mobile suits again. I wouldn't even want confirmation that this is Earth. This is just West Planet. Hmm. Interesting. Did you envision like an overall sinister force behind everything? Or is this going to be more like a group of, you know, wandering pilots maybe that kind of keep crossing paths and form like a a friendship band? They just encounter various towns and you know, locales and situations where, you know, we have to deal with bandits. Okay, we have to deal with a corrupt mayor. Okay, we have to deal with some type of stampeding AI, you know, stuff like that. Interesting. I definitely thought it would be based on Earth. I think your idea of like, you know, a bandit story here and then you help someone there, I think that would work for the first like half of the show. And then I think after that, I would introduce maybe a more overarching plot. Hmm. My overall idea, I'm gonna, I'll just tell you, is called uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Revolver. Wow. In this world, the Earth Federation, or the the equivalent, whatever you want to name it, they've fallen sort of after the Great War of, you know, Gundam X proportions. And the ability to produce new mobile suits on the level of Gundams is no longer feasible and will remain so for some time, you know, maybe a few hundred years. But the Federation sort of clings to power or maintains some acceptable level of lawlessness via, like, appointed marshals that pilot sort of high quality mobile suits left over from the war maybe they're gundams uh, but they're opposed probably very successfully just given they're outnumbered by outlaws you know who cobble together or steal their mobile suits from the same mobile suit stockpiles left over from the war uh, again gundams would be very rare uh, but every now and then one crops up isaac and causes a lot of mayhem when someone finds it or it falls into the wrong hands so i think you would have to do a western plot right so you'd have to have someone that's wronged likely a female in a way that the the law cannot help. So maybe a marshal secretly hires an outlaw do-gooder, you know, that, that has a Gundam to escort or, or sort of otherwise help this this wronged person. And then along the way, our outlaw hero would, would uncover some nefarious secrets about the government or status oh, no. of the world to gather a few more fellow do-gooder outlaws on his his or her side. And then you gotta you gotta end it with a good shootout, Isaac, a good Mexican standoff between our <laughs> ragtag Gundam heroes severely outnumbered by other outlaws hired by the federation or, or maybe even the marshals themselves and then i i thought like what's my twist for this show you're gonna pull a Shyamalan? <laughs> <There's> <laughs> no a twist. not quite that my twist would actually make sense it turned out the whole thing happened inside of an hourglass <laughs> <laughs> and that's why there was so much dust yeah. it all makes sense now. <laughs> it turned out they were dead the whole time <laughs> <laughs> this is hell this is purgatory <laughs> that's the end of the show they die when the guy turns the hourglass over. yeah they just and everybody <laughs> reverts <laughs> <laughs> so then i thought like how can i twist this and i think i'm stealing a little bit from one piece here but oh no so i, I think in general the show given the setting it has to be earth-based right or by earth-based i mean like land-based like we really wouldn't have a whole lot of space combat no i really didn't imagine any yeah yeah. I pictured zero space combat. At first I thought, well, maybe they can planet hop and each planet is a Western. And then I thought about it. Then why not just stay on the same planet? So no, th yeah. there's, yeah, I envisioned not even a white base. You know, everybody's just Gundam footing it from to town to town. So I agree. But then I was like, okay, maybe we'll have a big space reveal at the end where there is some sort of advanced portion of civilization left and they're living in space. Like they've been living there since the war. And maybe that's how new Gundams come into the show is that they fall from space or they're launched from space. 
And that would be my protagonist, Isaac. I think he'd be a young outlaw dreaming of a better life who inadvertently intercepts a Gundam that you know fell from the sky. People in this age, they don't know that it's even possible for people to be up there, right? Because the war was quite some time ago. <laughs> so are these colonies that are shipping Gundams over, like, they're just operating under their last instructions? They're like, well, there's still lawlessness on Earth. Our orders were manufacture <laughs> Gundams and ship them to Earth. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think there would be a significant population on Earth. I think it would be, you know, one colony max. Oh, okay. And yeah, I don't know why they would be sending Gundams to Earth. We'd have to figure that out. Maybe they're for the Marshals to sort of huh. maintain their power. Because I'm sure the Marshals lose their Gundams every now and then. You know why they lost the Gundams, Brian? Because there are no keys. <laughs> <laughs> there are no codes. It's not Gato proof <laughs> <laughs> Even in this Western timeline, you didn't Gato proof your Gundam. <laughs> or actually, what if there are keys, but they're those very basic skeleton keys? <laughs> so if you have like a locksmith, you can really get into any Gundam. <laughs> Yes, that could be a running joke of the show. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, where's the Gundam? I think those bandits brought a locksmith with them. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I don't know. I think that's that's my pitch uh, for Gundam as a Western. And, you know, maybe you could have our outlaw protagonist. You'd have to go around and, and make some friends, you know, along the way. Right. Maybe he befriends someone that has a, a sniper Gundam kind of thing. You, you could do the different styles of Western Gundams. You took the words right out of my mouth. There has to be, like like you said, sniper guy, right? I mean, main hero probably uses one gun. And then, of course, mm-hmm. you got trick shooter guy, right? He's got, like, two. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> even, like, General Grievous is himself. His special mode's like, oh, his his arms break in half, and now he's got, like, four arms. Oh, I like Something that. Something like that. What else do you need? You need, like, Gatling gun guy, you know, because we've never mm-hmm. seen Gatling guns or beam Gatling guns. So when that gets revealed, it's like, oh, my God, he can fight, like, <laughs> 50 people at once. Yep. Yep. And of course, Brian, we need Beam Lasso Guy. Ooh, love it. He's just such an expert with it. You know, it'll wrap around the Dom looking bandit, and the Dom bandit thinks he can just kind of hover away, but no, he gets dragged around. <laughs> yeah. Y- you envision them riding giant mechanical horses? <laughs> so so uh, that was the question I had for you. That might be like over the line, right? Yeah. That might be like too much to where I can no longer take the show seriously because i feel like you have to strike a balance in this show that's very similar to g gundam in the sense that it's a little wacky but you have to be still invested in like the story right it can't just be a full-on comedy so i think if like everybody has their own food psyche right from g gundam yeah that might be too much so i was thinking instead you could have like gundam speeder bikes and that could be a a play on like sleds uh you know from universe century I think speeder bikes would be okay because, again, if it is a desolate area and there's not a lot of towns, even the Gundams or mobile suits would need a a better way to get around than just walking or spending their propellant, you know, trying to fly from from one town to the other. I like that. And you can always lampshade it by, like, the logo on each speeder bike. It's always some type of horse. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Something like that. I don't know. The acronym will be MARE. You know, mobile (laughs) armored reconnaissance uh, exolift. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm writing my mare. Yeah, that, that that's perfect. Something I at least want one episode of, though, would be cool, would be um a rodeo episode. <laughs> Maybe there's a prize or something, and, like, all the Gundams yeah. think they can do it. And, like, I don't know. It's like an AI gone rogue kind of mechanical bull thing. Ooh. Some leftover from the war. Some mobile armor leftover from the war that was an AI. So yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, there's a few of them laying around. You know, they kind of look like bulls, and they kind of stampede every once in a while. But... For the most part, the townspeople just kind of avoid them. But, um, you know, if they want to show, then send out a Gundam to kind of rodeo it up. I like that. That kind of goes to my next question. Do you see mobile armors in this show, or does that not make sense? Because I guess the bull would kind of be like a mobile armor, right? It'd be a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. I would see, well, uh, that could even be just some type of drone or something like that. Yeah. But I guess they could be included. I'm not sure how you'd go about it. Maybe like a group of bandits or something like that, or some dirty mayor would be like, uh, you know, we we don't really have a Gundam ourselves, but we're going to build this thing called a mobile doll or a mobile armor, and it's going to go toe to toe with the Gundam. I mean, that might be something funny, though. Like, just like the original series, we had a constant stream of mobile armors. Maybe there'll Mm -hmm. be this, you know, corrupt mayor the Gundam's kind of snubbed once, and ever Uh since then, he's poured his wealth into making mobile armors as the series goes on, (laughs) and they're equally useless. (laughs) I like that, yeah. And then you could always be throwing their pilots in jail. Yeah, they'll be categorized as like those harmless villains that sometimes show up in anime where they're kind of more of a nuisance and, you know, the the, the heroes kind of half-heartedly always defeat them. 
I was thinking the mobile armors would take the place of like wagons or like stagecoaches. Oh, would they look like them? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I just I was trying to picture like if our Gundam is the cowboy, like what is bigger than a cowboy? And I think it would be wagon or a stagecoach, and then towards the end right there was like mounted cannons like that that could be a big enemy at the end right or like you said the gatling gun yeah oh god there's gotta be something rattlesnake too like either bandits that are rattlesnakes or like maybe like a rattlesnake gundam or something you know it's got like a rattler <laughs> that's a cool name <laughs> rattler gundam yeah that's cool i like that what I like about this series, Isaac, is because there's not a giant war going on, you could get a lot more of that gunfight where it's very much like a like a six on six or, you know, three on ten. I feel like it would have a very much more like eighth MS team vibe. And I, I feel like you'd get that much more intimate, smaller fight in a show like this where you, where you had the shootout yeah. at the Federation Corral. I like that. I mean, for all we know, when like, you know, the the heroes roll up into a town and they, they go to the saloon, maybe one of them accidentally bumps into the wrong person. And guess what? The next day they're going to have a, a shootout at noon. Everybody in the town goes to the, the center of the town where the Gundams are just facing off with the black hat and then they just wait for the draw, right? So what are some of the plots that you see in this show? There's the duel at noon, got to have the, the shootout at the end. So we're going to do things like the town that's actually under the control of the corrupt marshal or the corrupt mayor. The Gundam pilots got to liberate the town. A group of bandits that are uh, robbing, you know, the livestock or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some environmental situations where, you know, there's a calamity going to happen, like a, a flood or a dam's about to break and it's up to the Gundams to kind of manage it. Damsel in distress stuff too, I think. Like uh, they kidnapped, uh, you know, the lady that runs a saloon. So they got to go, you know, rescue her from uh, the, the bandits. And maybe these towns, like even though they're on the fringe of holding on to civilization, they still got like some type of train system, like magnetic levitating futuristic train that barely runs still. And of course the bandits are going to put the damsel in distress on the train tracks. Oh. <laughs> so, things like that. What do you envision the main Gundam looking like? Would it keep the blue, red, and white color scheme? Or would, would you change it up? No, I very much see it keeping that. Definitely it's going to have a white hat and it's going to have a beam revolver. Does it have like a holster? Are these Gundams wearing like cowboy boots? Because I know you hate stilettos. They're wearing as close to cowboy boots as Gundams can wear cowboy boots. They're as much Western looking cowboys as a Gundam or a mobile suit can be. Okay. So here's how I'm going to justify the cowboy boots. Clearly I thought way too much about this. Oh boy. Going back to my dust idea. That's why if there's there's too much dust, so... We need to have, you know, high boots on these Gundams to keep it out of the mechanics as much as possible. So you got your high boots, your big poncho, and your hat. That's the real world reason for, for wearing it too. So if there's just more dust in our era, then I think that's enough to justify it for a wacky show. You just have to make an effort, I think. Yeah, I, I imagine this is a world that frequently has to deal with sandstorms of varying intensity. The people's clothes is a certain way, the Gundams and machinery is a certain way. You know, and they're just trying to get by in this environment after some war ended, you know, centuries ago. So one thing I thought was, given that this would take place after a big war and the, and the Gundams are, are left over from that war, it would be a good, another opportunity to do something like Turn A, where maybe they find a Zaku or something very similar to a Zaku. Any appetite for that, or you think it would be just be all original designs? No, we're going to do callback after callback. There's going to be a, a, a Xeon symbol as a cow emblem. Yep. You know, when they brand the cows, there's going to be a, a town called Zanscare. Oh, uh, like a group it. of bandits are called the Crossbones. Ooh. A mountain range called a White Base. Looks like a crash White Base. <laughs> I like it. Things like that. We can even have characters pretty much be reborn in the setting. You know, like, uh, you know, you got to go talk to, you know, Mayor Guerin. You know, he's a really <laughs> shady guy and he, he runs his town like clockwork. But man, he's he's not someone you really want to cross. <laughs> Marshal Rall, he's a very reasonable authority figure. He'll definitely help out the Gundams dealing with the bandits. Right. Yeah, I was going to say Rama Rall has to be the main sheriff. <laughs> he, he'll, his town will definitely be uh, used to having justice and, and reasonable authority <laughs> figures. <laughs> What existing series do you think this would be closest to in terms of tone as well as animation style? Kind of a mix of, like you said, the first half of Gundam X, but I'd like a little bit of camp in it, so in a way, really, uh, build fighters. Okay. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but at the same time, 
we're, we're really trying to stick to the own rules that the universe has made. It's just a fun idea for a Western Gundam series. So it's going to be fun, lighthearted. We're not going to talk about pacifism. We're not going to talk about, <laughs> the, you know, the nature of human destiny and evolution. It, it's just going to be gunslinging robots on the desert Western world, having fun and solving problems. Did you envision this as like, there's there's a point where it just gets hard boiled, where like half the planet like gets wiped out by a, an orbital weapon? <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely pictured some hybrid of X and G in terms of tone, just to get you there in a believable sense. Like, how, how do you strike the, the balance between having a Gundam wearing a hat and having a, a somewhat serious plot happening? I don't want it to be a complete comedy, I guess is where I'm going with it. Like, for example, Trigun yeah. was great, but I think a lot of episodes were maybe too comedic. Right, and there's, like, whiplash with Trigun, right? Because, like, yes, some episodes yes. would be pretty comedic, and then, like, some of the villains would show up and do really villainous things, and, like, there'd be a mood whiplash. You know, right. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> exactly. So we want to try to strike a more even tone, you know, across the whole series rather than having that whiplash. I don't, I don't think that whiplash is always good, necessarily, so... Yeah, I would say, though, that, like, as serious as this possible series could get, it still wouldn't be, you know, super duper serious. I mean, the, the most serious bandits they run across or corrupt officials and stuff like that. At the end of the day, they still take these guys down with a, a pink explosion or they, they get locked up in the, the town jail. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of the town jail, I just think of Otis from Andy Griffith's show. I know that's not even a Western, but... Yeah, it's close enough, I guess. <laughs> Did you envision, like, the cockpit being, like, the mobile fighter system? That kind of makes sense, because then they could aim their own gun. It would then almost look like a virtual reality game, you know, inside, right? I could see that. I wouldn't be opposed to that, certainly. What did you think? At first, I thought just the cockpit, our usual tried-and-true cockpit. Probably only, like, the spherical display for uh, maybe just the Gundams themselves. Mm, yeah. Or that's something that just comes along inevitably when the Gundams get upgraded. I'm open to it, but for the most part, I thought I'd be more grounded if they're very much still stuck in keyboards and buttons and joysticks. Yeah, that makes sense, because if technology has regressed, how would they repair a mobile trace system cockpit if it got damaged? I think that'd be very difficult for them. Did you envision them having beam sabers? I'm kind of tilting towards no, just because that really, I feel, pulls it away from Western. I'd be much more happier with heat knives and beam knives. I agree. I think you could have that one outlaw friend that you meet that has a beam saber, and he could be like the beam saber guy. Yeah, that would have way more impact. And I think that would be kind of like, you know, Zero from the Mega Man X games, right? Like, no one else really has the Z saber except Zero. So that's what makes it special. But you're right. If everybody has a beam saber, that doesn't feel very Western-y to me. You could even have a guy that's just the knife guy, right? Dagger Gundam or something. Well, no, not dagger. (laughs) Throwing knife guy. I don't know. Blade Gundam. Yeah, there you go. The very famous um, Western, The Magnificent Seven, is based on uh, The Seven Samurai, so it could even be a a reference to that, that there's like one guy with a sword. Yeah. How many guys do you picture, or not guys, excuse me, excuse me, (laughs) how many pilots of either gender or neither gender do you envision in the total group of heroes and main characters? I mean, I think sticking to The Magnificent Seven, you can't have any more than that. So I'd still probably stick to three or four max. What what did you think? I guess five-ish, just to kind of round it out. That's a little Gundam wing, but, uh, you know, we always get main guy, heavy guy, sniper guy, close quarters guy, and then whoever else. <laughs> this is a good opportunity to have your ho-ho-ho Gundam come back. It's saloon Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> she could be like the, the Marina Baccarin character from Firefly, but as, you know, as a Gundam. So supporting them, do you envision like a mechanical kind of hovering vehicle size wagon with like their support crew like their comms guy and their the obligatory mechanics or is it the gundams they are the mechanics they just work on their stuff they walk town to town all that on their adventures maybe you have like a small wagon that they get kind of as the show goes on but i think at least the first half they have to walk and travel by themselves and i think that's what makes the gundam so much better maybe they can go longer they have better reactors they're made of better materials they last they're more durable than what the bandits use then you get into the issue of ammo. Right. That's what makes ammo special. There's just not a lot of it. And if you're going to be out in the world for that long, you know, you have to make every shot count, right? You can't be like Troa. You can't just unload, <laughs> you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of ammo every 30 seconds. Maybe you only have six shots for like a week. 
Right. Did you envision flight in this series or just kind of what we're used to in ground combat? Like you get a few, you know, vernier thruster boost jumps and that's about it. But nobody's really going to be zipping around the sky in this series for, for logistical reasons. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no flight really. Exactly what you said. I would only have the high jumps, you know, no more than what we saw like Amuro do in the first, in the first series, right? Where he would jump up for a while, come back down, kind of the same thing. Okay. You mentioned that, you know, the series would kind of end in your vision with like the government sort of being behind it or at least being revealed to be a, a bigger threat or whatever's left of the, the larger government. Did you envision like a black hat that's been kind of going toe to toe with them the whole series or a, an obligatory red mobile suit that's kind of been a thorn in their side? Or did you want this to be not so much, you know, one mobile suit's been kind of the main threat, but it's been more just this government revealed to be causing a lot of obstacles for them? I think you'd have to get some sort of red mobile suit in there, right? It doesn't feel Gundam if you don't have that red antagonist, yeah. at least in some form. So I think that antagonist would have to be some, like, the ultimate evil marshal that's working with the government. Or you could spin it on its head, and, and they could have just been enemies the whole time, but then it turned out that once everyone finds out the government is more evil than, than, than they thought, they could team up or something at the end. But you'd have to have some rival gunslinger, right? I think so. It's got to be a black hat. They've got to be able to go toe-to-toe with the main character, maybe of some backstory or something like that. But um, if, if they're a frequent recurring threat that keeps coming back, I think that'd be pretty cool. This setting also gives us a unique opportunity to play with the name of the show. Hmm. Gundam has the word gun in it. Cowboy has the word boy in it. Well, I think one of the original titles that Tomino wanted to use was Gun Boy. Would you call it Mobile Suit Gun Boy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it has to have Gundam in it, but I envisioned it as Gundam Gunslinger. Although Gundam Revolver, Gundam Gunslinger sounds much more campy. Gundam Revolver, your version, definitely sounds more grounded, especially with your overarching plot that the government <laughs> is behind it, either the lawlessness or whatever other plots underway, the government turned out to be behind it. Yeah, I would try to have, you know, some serious attempt at a plot. You know, sticking to G Gundam, right? There, there was Devil Gundam plot, so I would try to have something to that level of seriousness. Probably not more than that. Oh, okay, so some weapon from the war returns, something like that, or the the government and its foolishness woke it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or or they find out that the war ended because of the orbital cannon, and maybe they're trying to restart it for whatever reason, or you know, something to that effect, where they right. <laughs> to have to put a stop to it somehow. We'll wipe out the bandits in one shot. You fools, it'll wipe out the planet in one shot. <laughs> <laughs> I also think you could get really creative with the art style, the animation style. And I envision it looking a little comic booky. Like you could play with more noir colors is the wrong word, but Oh, sunset colors. Oh, there you go. Western yeah. sunset colors. Battle that happens in sunset and it's all like purples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Wow, that'd be pretty cool. I like this idea, Brian. I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah. yeah. We'll add it to our list. <laughs> <laughs> this will be placed right ahead of the Gundam musical. <laughs> How about, like, inevitably the, the person that trails them in the mechanical uh, stagecoach or, um, you know, covered wagon? Maybe in episode one, it was, like, the saloon owner. And, like, the bandits destroyed her saloon but saved her and her family. So, in return, they're going to be, like, the mechanics and support team. Yeah, that works out great. I like that. So, they, they follow along. Whether you want us to or not, we're always going to be there repairing you guys, cooking for you guys, and just being comms and radar or whatever. Yeah, and that really works out with the whole, this protagonist would likely, you know, assemble his band of do-gooders over time. Yeah, some of the Gundams can definitely be enemies too at first, right? You know, the the sniper Gundam, he's got to fight him, and it turned out the sniper Gundam thought he was just coming to attack the town, but not actually just passing through and peaceful or whatever, and they become friends. Do you think that Gundams would be the same size, or would they be smaller, larger? Like, are we talking F91 sizes, original series, Hathaway sizes? Ooh, interesting. You know what? At first I thought full size, but now that I think about it, yeah, maybe smaller, more F91 size would be a bit more realistic. There's not the infrastructure to manage the whole massive Gundam, so if you can't miniaturize them, yeah, it makes more sense how a town or a group of bandits would be able to kind of keep them... Um, well maintained yeah also i guess as your towns get smaller maybe it makes sense for the gundams to get smaller too right because if yeah the Ksai gundam he could just step on the whole town pretty much <laughs> 
Probably. Maybe that'll be a threat at some point. There's this giant thing <laughs> walking in a straight line, and the Gundams, they have to figure out how to stop this thing. <laughs> it won't respond to communications. It's probably on autopilot. There's no one inside, and it's walking towards a town at a meandering pace. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could draw, because then I would draw a, uh, a Gundam with a hat and a poncho. <laughs> Maybe someone's already done that. I don't know. See, the thing with cowboys, though, is like there's so many different hats, right? Like watch any mm-hmm. Western, you know, there's just so many different styles, different shapes and things like that. I just it, it really redesigns the Gundams in a way, but I think it's going to look looking pretty cool. In terms of what the Gundams look like, which series do you think is closest to what's in your head? In my head, it's probably closest to like the Barbatos from Iron-Blooded Orphans, how you can s- sort of see its frame. I feel like we would have something like that because, again maintenance is hard right yeah i think maybe g gundam so the shapes are a bit rounder and um Mm -hmm. more cartoonish in a way but there's still at least some attempt to make it look look very functional mechanically i don't know isaac i like it i think it's a good idea again sunrise where's my gundam western I, i think there's potential here I can see it having some trouble, though. I, I like. I would not be surprised if, <laughs> if we were handed a blank check and we did it, if it was still considered not one of the greater Gundam, just because <laughs> it's a Western, and you know Westerns have kind of fallen out of favor, even though they're pretty unique. And I think a Gundam Western would be, at least for long-term fans that are maybe want something a little different in their sci-fi, would be a, a pretty different take on Gundam. I wonder if Westerns are popular in Japan. Probably not. I would say much less so than here, simply because it didn't happen over there. But there's probably some ardent Western fans. The one thing I will say in terms of existing series, so one of the series that we're going to read soon, Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam Steel 7, is basically Gundam's version of Magnificent 7, as far as I understand. So we'll we'll see how that shakes out. But fitting that you brought up Gundam as a Western right before we're about to read Steel 7. So, (laughs) But, um... I mean, why not go for it? It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That should be the rule for any Gundam or anime series. Is it going to be cool? Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, and I think Gundam lends itself to... It's already a popular franchise, so you can experiment every few years and do something weird, right? Yeah, it'd be pretty lovable, especially since we've reached the point where they're doing like live-action Gundam now as a show. Right. But this would be you know, much more of a... A passion project, I guess. A, a lighthearted <laughs> work of fun. You know, what if they? What if we put them in cowboy hats? You know, like that, that's Tomino said, give the green light. That's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and let let me speak Sunrise's language for a minute, Isaac. This is my pitch Uh-oh. to you, Sunrise. The reason why you should do a Gundam Western is because you can then sell double the model kits. Because not only do you have to buy the Gundam, but you have to buy their their mare speeder bike as well. <laughs> And they each have a different one. They don't all ride the same speeder bike, Isaac. Just like any good cowboy, they all have their preferred horse. Is it like on the side of it, like turbines? Do they look like horse legs spinning? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You could do, you know, sky's the limit, man. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Do you envision not super weapons, but, you know, big weapons that kind of show up that cause problems for them? Or is it going to be just more... You know, you got to fight like the the three Dom bandits and then you got to fight like the the red mono eye guy. And then you got to fight the villain that's only fighting you in dust storm. So you really can't see where he is. Um, I mean, I think you have to have at least a few big villains. Maybe not all the time. I'd I'd say most of your enemies are are like the ones you just described. I think at the very end, you know, we could have an orbital cannon problem, right? That that's a good problem to have. I was trying to think of like what would be the Western equivalent of the Psycho Gundam. Huh. Canyon Maker Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. It'd be hard to take something like that on if you've got limited resources and, and limited people. So if you can come up with a good way to make it happen, I'm I'm all for it. How do you envision the government that you said was a threat? Like, is there a capital city actually, like in Trigun, that we almost never see? Or is this, you know, essentially a remnants in a bunker giving vague orders to these small towns? more along the lines of remnants in a bunker, but you could have a bigger city, but even then it would still be a not a big city relative to today's world. But then I would I would think, yeah, maybe they're getting their resources from, from space. Maybe my space station that's still up there is it was a mining colony and that's how they're sending more Gundams to Earth every few years or something. Are there people in that colony or is this a case of like they left the lights on at the factory and its last instructions were 
make these <laughs> Gundams and send them in intervals to Earth. No, I think there has to be some population up there. I mean, I don't think it's millions of people. I think it's thousands. Okay. That's where the, the elite fled to. Are they aware of the situation on Earth? Or is it just kind oh, of yeah. like, well... Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's kind of beneath them to help. It's like, well, things are fine here. Just send them some Gundams. They'll work themselves out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're they're trying to, you know, maintain their, if you can call it, superiority or, or power at that stage. Maybe uh, they're somehow they're getting something from those on, on Earth and they need to keep that up, so... Oh, then this is kind of getting uh, Reconquista-ish. So they're kind of uh, villains and abstract, overarching villains in a way. I actually haven't watched Reconquista, so I don't know. Maybe... I haven't seen the whole thing, but I I know the broad strokes. Hopefully I'm not too close. <laughs> <laughs> Anything wacky? Like, <laughs> are there going to be cows? Are there going to be stampedes? Are we going to go, like, full, like, new biosphere and there's going to be, like, I don't know, pink frogs that, like, people <laughs> raise as cats? <laughs> <laughs> um you could definitely have some something like that i mean maybe not i think the key there is to not go overboard okay you don't want like herds of pink cows in every episode but if you if you've got some here and there if you've got a weird cat here a weird cow there i think that's totally fine i think that could be charming right you can sell plushes of that right sunrise maybe it could be a play on do androids dream <laughs> and it, you know they'd all be mechanical at this point i don't know i think it's better if it's like you said, it's just a ruined Earth that's been desertified, or it's Planet X that kind of in some corner of the galaxy that's uh, dried out and survived a war. I envision firearms themselves between people to be sort of a cultural faux pas. Otherwise, you know, the shootout would happen in the saloon when you bump somebody right. or spill their drink or whatever, or get an argument. So that that's something that's not really done. Probably people don't really have hand pistols at all, really. The recourse is let's put down our drinks, go outside to our mobile suits and settle this. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And then I think the way you would pitch that is that if someone tries to start a fight in the saloon, then whoever that has the Gundam wins. You can't start a fight without a Gundam in this world because someone's there who does have a, maybe not a Gundam, but a mobile suit, right? What do you, you right, going to go yeah. start a fight with the guy with the mobile suit? Well, he's just going to go step on your house. Yeah. The guys at the saloon, they have mobile suits. <laughs> It's very Pokemon. It's gunless. If you want to solve a problem, you either take out your Pokemon or you get in your mobile suit. <laughs> <laughs> Another good thing we could play with in this series, Isaac, is taking a little bit out of Trigun's book or maybe One Piece. You know, people could have bounties, right? And they could have nicknames. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about that at all. Yeah. You could introduce that bounty hunter angle, too. So, yeah. The government sends bounty hunters or something or, or corrupt people. Well, anybody can really send a bounty hunter. But, um,. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. I like that. Or sometimes they work as bounty hunters. Right. Maybe money can be like kind of a recurring problem for them. They really have the Gundams, but other than that, they're kind of dependent on jobs and stuff and the right. kindness of sa saving towns to really keep surviving. Everybody loves a good bounty hunter story. Yeah, or defeating evil bounty hunters. Yeah, I don't read the plot synopsis and it's about bounty hunters and I, I'll never be like, I don't want to watch a bounty hunter show. Everybody loves bounty hunters. Come on. Got the good bounty hunters, the bad ones. Maybe they'll have one that occasionally sides against them and sides with them. There's always that that dynamic. Yeah, and you could definitely do that here, right? Where that that's harder in a show that has the big war where there's two defined sides. Do you envision like there being a lot of rockets, or is that something that would require way too much infrastructure to make a lot of like missiles, rockets? It'd be pretty rare. I don't think there'd be very many. Yeah, and the collateral damage with those is off the charts, right? If your town is small and you launch the rocket in the town, goodbye saloon <laughs> yeah and also the, the bandits i don't think they ever want to destroy towns outright maybe control towns or steal from them but if the town's gone they're kind of on limited time also <laughs> right yeah it's definitely more of a control aspect do you envision like anything quasi supernatural like new types or some type of psychic abilities do they go into seed mode do they go into whiskey mode you know <laughs> Um, they pound back a shot and then we see like a, a shot glass on the screen for a second with that, that <laughs> seed mode noise and then they like they start fighting better <laughs> the ice cubes you know blow up or something Actually, that sounds pretty funny maybe we should put that in as like a joke <laughs> once you know there's one character that like uh, the, the, the drink and bottle are clearly a problem but he's, he's one of the team so nobody says anything <laughs> <laughs> my initial reaction is not really I feel like if you put that in then you have to explain it and then that, that's kind of where we got into the, you know, 
human destiny, human evolution, human advancement in other series that kind of takes over, you know, what is a coordinator? Are coordinators better? What, you know, I don't like coordinators. I'm not a coordinator. Right. So then it, it kind of takes over the plot if you do that, maybe. I don't know. I, I would say no on the surface unless I could think of a way to fit it in more naturally. What, what do you think? I like your thinking. Either we don't address it at all or we do it in a, such a dismissive way. I don't know. There's a situation in the bar where somebody knew somebody was going to like drop their drink or something and they catch it. They're like, how did you know that? I'm a new type. And I was like, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just move on with the plot. We never address it again. <laughs> or or we cut to the government in the bunker, like, uh, you know, going through their data files or something like, huh, new type weapons. Uh, that'll never work. <laughs> or something like that. And then they just move on. The unicorn is, like, back there in a box. It's a fantasy horse. We don't need that. Leave it away. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just parody all of the new type derivatives over the years. Yeah. I would parody Wing by having someone try to blow himself up, and then he actually dies instead of just surviving <laughs> with minimal <laughs> scratches. Oh, no. We should have, like, one of the members of, like, the little bunker government council, like, always oh, stand up and want to talk about pacifism. But, like, they just <laughs> they tell him or her to, like, shut up, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they just get shot. This is the West. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just take it. <laughs> the one gun they have in the room, they use it on the person that wanted to talk about pacifism. <laughs> <laughs> Would you kill any of the main cast by the end? Like in a Western, you know, some people usually die by the end. If I did, I would, after the credits, I'd show that they were still alive. Mm, okay. That'd be the stinger. Gunslinger sounds much more lighthearted than Revolver. Revolver <laughs> can get a bit more hard boiled. Like people will die yeah. in Revolver, but Gunslinger's, you know, the. The criminals always kind of, you know, get handcuffed and they're thrown into the jail and town laughs about it. <laughs> do, they, do they put their Gundam in jail too? Yeah, I'd be okay with like, we see a bunch of mono wise kind of lassoed up, you know, like their arms <laughs> behind their backs and, you know, they kind of march them into town and the town cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you want to see come back? Like, like old characters? Yeah, do you want like a, a bounty hunter named Camille to come back? And oh, you I know, see, the, I see. the big reveal is that he's actually he's not able to walk. <laughs> he's always in his cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> do you want like a I don't know a mayor Haman? That's like the only female mayor mm. we encounter, but she's like she really has runs everything together and it's pretty hard to defeat. I definitely want Ramba. I think he just lends himself well to a western. He's already got the mustache going, right? Right. Oh, you know, it'd be cool if this little bunker government that's, you know, giving orders to the towns or at least, mm -hmm. you know, going through the motions of still being the government control. It's essentially a council of all the villains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a, you know, Councilman Jabril, a Councilman Dagwin, a Councilman Meitzer. <laughs> I like that. For us fans, it's very rewarding to see all the villains for once on the same side. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that could be fun. I would like to see some more obscure picks, I guess. Ooh. I think Jamil from Gundam X would fit right in in a Western setting. Oh, yeah. It's got the glasses. <laughs> the dramatic glasses. On the female side, I think Natarl would... Oh, Natarl. Oh, that'd be cool. She finally gets a more leading role. That's nice, yeah. She could be like a, a sheriff of a town or something. She'd fit right in there. So She'd be a great sheriff. Yeah, she'd have her shit together, right? Yeah. What was your theory for mobile armors? Are they going to be something that just falls from the sky or it's a rogue AI like iron-blooded orphans? Or is it more just occasionally they run into some faction or group of people that manage to throw together one and decides they want to fight the Gundams? I think it was more the latter. So every now and then someone just builds, you know, a big thing to compete with the mobile suits and, and maybe that's what they are. I don't want to go too deep into the mobile armor thing, though. I, I think that gets away from the yeah. the smaller tone of the show i guess if that makes sense you know it'd be really cool we see a reborn valvaro with a two-armed kelly lasner oh there you go yeah kelly lasner he'd be another good one yeah he gets a redemption episode where he comes back and he's maybe he's like a bounty hunter and he realizes yeah, this probably was a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a great idea i think it's got a lot of potentials i say we do it <laughs> <laughs> comment below what you want to see in a gundam western series It'll be a stage play, and the costumes will be designed and made by Isaac and myself. <laughs> Lots of ponchos so we can cover up our poorly designed mobile suit cockpits and chest areas. <laughs> How come everyone's in ponchos? Like, well, you know, textiles are a really big industry in this planet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listeners, let us know what you think of our Gundam as a Western idea. What characters from existing series you'd like to see parodied in the show? 
give us your Gundam design ideas. Would your Gundams use revolvers, rifles? What would they look like? Do you like Gundams and cowboy hats? Is that a great idea? Is it a terrible idea? How big would their boots be? You know, do you like ponchos? Would they wear cow print, Isaac? <laughs> I hope not. That's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and also your like name ideas for the pilots or the Gundams and all mm-hmm. that. Go off the whole Western type of names. Everybody had like a cool kind of thuggish, interesting name that was memorable. Yeah, like Gold Jaw Pete or something. Golden Nugget Nancy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds. If I type that into Google, I'm. I might. You know. <laughs> I feel like I might get some real results on that one. She works at the saloon, Brian. She's a lady of the <laughs> night. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take us away, Isaac. All right, everybody. Before you go to sleep tonight, stand next to your bed. Get on your knees. Put your hands together. Look up to, at the ceiling and yeehaw, Gundam revolver and Gundam slingers. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.